when they ride on boats and when they ride What's on that? boats and the wind when they ride on boats and the wind blows their eyelashes like all over the place. <laughs> Dewey, that is actually really painful. And like you get one in your eyeball and you're like crying and you want no one to notice. Oh my God, I wish you guys could understand the pain. No, I understand. I take Eleanor to all her lash appointments. And when we went to Vietnam, she could never face forward on the boat because her lashes were throwing up gang signs. Everyone thinks I'm being romantic with my husband because I'm using him as a shield. I'm like, nah, dude, I'm trying to cover my eyelashes. <laughs> You're like, I'm not just going like this because I'm being sultry with them. Like, I actually protected these things. That's funny. Um, so I'll see, like, Jen has hers in, like, individually. I don't know how they do all that with the glue or whatever. But they're, like, individual ones. And so I'll see one, like, in the sink. I'm like, babe, there's, like, $40 right there. <laughs> right, Eleanor, Eleanor, when, when Eleanor's uh, lashes fall out, they'll, she'll purposely pick them out and put them on my table. And I'm just like, are you fucking serious? Like, can you just toss it? <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I love this humor for the morning. Angela, good luck with your appointment and hopefully they turn out uh, amazing. So um, let me see if we have any guests on the line today. Let me just double check the roster here. Um, no guests this morning, but I am going to turn it over to uh, Mr. David Hill. Are you there? Yeah. All right, yep, David Miller, yep, yep. top of the morning, Wednesday morning. I want you to bring us out of the tunnel, bring us out on the field, big dog. Okay, team fast. <laughs> Man, I thought I was going to, you know, take this little group coaching from the bed this morning, but he just made me jump up, you know, going to get ready. This is how it is. I love each and every one of y'all. Let's go out there and show some houses, get some home buyers in the contract. Let's get it. Uh. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's what's up. So you guys, um, happy Wednesday morning. Like I said, we're going to change the pace of these group coachings, uh, just a little bit more structured. So as I said, on Mondays, it's going to be about Monday motivations, intentions, and goals for the week. Wednesday, we're going to talk about the market. We're going to have a freestyle conversation about the market, roundtable discussion about the market. That way, we're hearing from each other. We're hearing about the market, and we're able to talk intelligently about our uh, about the market when we're out with our consumers. And then on Friday, we're going to do like a freestyle Friday. We'll pick different topics. We'll have some fun with it, as always. That way, you guys know exactly what to get into every single week. So if you're having challenges, if you need a little um, you know, touch base on, on what's going on in the market, you always have something to look forward to. So I, I read this or watched this this morning and I want to share it with you. Uh, it's from John Maxwell. And I want to share this with you because I thought it was great. It says, I am today where my thoughts have brought me. I will be tomorrow where my thoughts will take me. How I think is so essential to how I feel, right? Let's think about that. Let me say this one more time. I am today where my thoughts have brought me. I will be tomorrow where my thoughts will take me how I think is so essential to how well I do. I don't know how you guys grew up, but I never grew up in an environment where it was like mental conditioning, you know, the power of your mind and, and all these things that we're taught, you know, as, as adults now and, and in this society that we live in. And so none of this was ingrained into me when I was a kid. And I learned this as I grew in my career, I grew in business and grew as an individual. Um, you know, the, the power of the mind. So I wanted to share that with you because I thought it was a powerful quote. Um, so what do you guys take away from what I just said? What are your thoughts inside on Hey, I'm getting some background noise. Uh, there we go. I muted that person. Um, so when I say that quote right there, what comes to mind? What what thoughts are provoked? I want you guys to chime in and, and, and tell me what your take on what I just shared is. Uh, Kelly, it's good to you. Hi. Hey um mindset right like your mindset is so important and i know that um for me meditation has helped so much just because you kind of learn to like let the bullshit thoughts that come into your mind just let them leave like come and go as they please and not pay attention to them and uh really like maintaining focus is so important um and so you seem, yeah. you seem like a very disciplined person, but like when, 
like how did you or have you always been like this part of me for asking or is this something that changed over time um definitely changed over time i would say um i mean obviously i've always had it in me otherwise i wouldn't be here now this way yeah. um but yeah i you know like you just kind of learn and life teaches you that that you are responsible for yourself and for your life and how you show up in the world. And, um, you know, as long as you keep your side of the street clean, kind of you put yourself in a position to win, right? Um, yeah. And, you know, the discipline part, it's just like anything worthwhile takes discipline and it yeah. takes patience. And so like, you just have to like do it, right? Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. Good stuff. Uh, Gabrielle, I saw your hand go up too. Gabrielle, you want to chime in? Oh yeah. Um, so it makes me think about the power of positive thinking and manifestation, but also the power of negative self-talk and what that can do to your day. So like, the same set of circumstances can happen to you, but how you think about what happened can change your reaction and also how it affects you. Yeah, totally. Absolutely love that. Who else wants to chime in on that? Go ahead, Amy. Hi, yes, this is great. This is like how, how I start my day, Kelly and um, Gabrielle, right on. Um, it's the law of attraction. Like we are sitting here right now because the thoughts that we had yesterday or the day before. It's like my life is in its current state because all of the work that I did with meditation and with, you know, I, I'm a big believer and you do it right when you wake up, right? First thing. And, you know, even in quantum physics, it's like, if you, what you put your attention on, you create and it's, you're pulling it towards you, you know, and every time you're, you're um, thankful and gratitude and abundance you're pulling that with your energy towards you like a magnet. And it really does work if you do it, you know, diligently every single day. For sure. For sure. Let's hear from one other person on this. Kyle, you got something you want to share on this? Yeah, man. I'll, uh, you'll sw sling a quote this way. I'll sling something back at you. Please. It's like a ship in the ocean, a whole sea cannot sink that ship unless it gets inside. The same thing as like all the negativity in the world. You you can't let it affect you unless it gets inside you. So kind of similar, I guess. Yeah, no, say that one more time, man, because I love that. Say that one more time. I've actually got it here for you. Give me one sec. Let me, uh, so an entire sea of water cannot sink a ship unless it gets inside. Similarly, the negativity of the world cannot put you down unless you allow it to get inside. Hmm. Love that. Absolutely love that. What's that from? What are you reading? Uh, that was just a post on Instagram that I saw a couple days ago. <laughs> right? <laughs> I was like, Hey, you're watching the real shit, man. I love it. I love it. Yeah. You know, and, and we're not obviously going to get too far deep in the woods on this. We'll save a lot of the, this for Monday. But I, I think that it's super important that wherever you are in your life and your business is a manifest manifestation of your thoughts. Now, whether you're in a place that you really, really enjoy or whether you're a place that you, you know, feel that you need some improvement, no matter where you're at, it, it, was, it was by your own creation right? It was by your own creation, right? And so if you want to change the things, then you have the power to do so. This isn't about, uh, you know, circumstances around us. We all have been dealt different cards in life. Jen posted something the other day. I didn't grow, uh, grow up with a bunch of great role models. They showed me a life that I'll never want to live, right? And so that fueled me to have a life where I can give and provide for my son in a different way so he won't have to struggle and live in poverty, right? So so it changed me. And so I really, really love these conversations. Ernesto, you got something you want to chime in, brother. Go ahead. Uh, I could wax poetic on this topic. Uh, I, I'm i not young. I'm 36 years old. So I want to begin by saying that I'm not young. And I'll, I'll be brief. I'll get still to the young. Point. Hello. <laughs> I'll be, all due respect, bro. I'm 41. I feel fucking young. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I'll, I'll be brief. I'll get to the point. Uh, up until about three years ago, 
I had really negative self-esteem, didn't believe in myself, all sorts of blah, 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 blah. And so now I invest heavily in like personal development, conferences, uh, masterminds, things of that sort. Uh, and I, I shared this story recently. Actually, I shared the story this morning with a mentor of mine uh, who I've known for, for my entire life. Uh, recently, I have a transaction where I'm helping a lady sell and then buy. Um, and she almost fired me. She almost fired me because things were not going well with the contractor. And she said, hey, I think it's best that you focus on my sale and I will help. Some, I will find somebody else uh, to help me with the purchase. Um, and I think the, the old me would have been defeated and just given up right away. And just like, OK, well, I'm going to make the best of it. And at least I got the sale. And I was like, no, fuck that. Like, I care so much about you. I don't think you fucking get it. I'm over here pulling your weeds. I'm scrubbing your tile. I'm literally scrubbing your toilet. Uh, and I told her straight up. I said, look, you don't owe me anything. <coughs> Um, and all I ask is that you don't sign an ex uh, don't sign an exclusive buyer rep with anybody down in Hollister. And if you find someone who's going to outwork me and outserve you, go ahead and fire me. But until then, leave the door open. So anyway, I feel like a different me. And if anyone feels like it's too late in your life to make that shift, uh, it's absolutely not. So hopefully that that story resonates and has an actual impact and a dollar value of what happens when you make these changes. Man, I, I absolutely love that. I was actually talking to a, a team member yesterday who was saying that some of your biggest growth in sales and in communication is being able to shift the mindset of a consumer and not saying this is rooted in manipulation, but being able to say, you know what, instead of me reverting back to the street, I'm like, what the fuck did you just say to me? Like, right. Like have that come out of me. It's like, how can I take this situation and through communication change the way that they're feeling and send this conversation in a completely different direction? right? That's a learned skill, you guys. Those things take time and time and time and practice versus someone says something to you and what do you do? What? Fight or flight, right? Instead of being like, let me process and let me communicate in a way that I can start over with this person, realign with this person and have a different outcome. But I've had that in my career at a young age. It was like, what the fuck did you just say to me? Like, hold on, no professionalism, <laughs> right? And I had to learn through time, like, okay, hold on a second. How can I win in this situation in regards to having a better outcome on the communication side? Because whenever you talk to a consumer, a sale is going to happen. They're either going to sell you on all the reasons why they don't want to work with you, this, that, or the other, or you're going to do the opposite and share with them and sell them on the reasons why they should work with you. And so that's all rooted in your, in your effective communication. So Ernesto, good stuff. Love that you brought that up. And if anybody's wondering, uh, we are now in contract on her purchase in Hollister, and she's super happy. So. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, sometimes you guys will learn just to put people in their place, but in the nicest way. And I'm not saying be a jerk, but being able through the communication process, be able to flip somebody and look at Ernesto, what, what happened? If you would have just let them bully or let her bully <laughs> He wouldn't have been in contract. Ginger, did you want to Good morning, chime Reden. in? Hey, I just want to let you know that. Ginger, 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 you're not email, muted. But I said in the oh. email. <laughs> uh, say again. Okay, let me mute some people. <laughs> okay, uh, good stuff. Anybody else want to chime in before we uh, shift gears? Going once, going twice. A couple people took themselves off of mute, but okay, cool. All right, so let's do this. I want to have a conversation about the market. Uh, Kyle, I saw you watching the weather report, a new segment of the weather report for July just came out. The information is fire. You're going to see some patterns and changes and some nuances in the market right now. And so wanted to have just a quick conversation about this. And so let's go around the room. I want to hear from some people. I want to talk to you about your specific market and give me a quick update as if I was the consumer. I'm going to go over to Christina D. Christina D, do you have a minute? Sorry, I'm driving right now. Okay, Christina, we'll, we'll come back to you, okay? Okay. All right, cool. So Miles Tillman. Miles, you work with a lot of investors. You're obviously deep in the woods right now with your business. Um, Miles, what is an area you feel you specialize in geographically? I would say East Contra Costa, Alameda County, and I'm getting more informed on Solano County as the days right. go by as well. Out of the three, which one do you feel most confident about? Probably East Contra Costa. East Contra Costa County. Yeah. Okay, so... So give me a quick update. I was a lead in the lead pond. You're calling me, kind of shaking the tree, telling me what's going on now. What's that conversation sound like? Give me an update. Yeah, Miles, we, we, uh, you know, we were looking for homes before, but you know, we never really found anything. It was tough out there. So 
Uh, I don't really know what's going on with the market now. Can you, can you update us? Yeah, definitely. I understand it's tough out there. There's a lot of movement, but in East Contra Costa specifically, there's still a bunch of opportunities in relation to the rest of the Bay Area. It's definitely more affordable. A lot of new housing is going up. Um, there, I would say there's an influx of movement from people in the immediate Bay Area. So that'd be San Francisco, Oakland, Richmond, Berkeley, El Cerrito. Kind of reminds me of when my family first moved to Richmond. I mean, not to Richmond, from Richmond to Antioch around that, what, 07, 08-ish range. It really much reminds me of that. People that didn't consider Antioch, Brentwood, Oakley area before are now starting to consider it. So I would say definitely to take another look at it. If you're into new construction or if you even want an older home, you can get a lot of good homes for a relatively cheap price compared to the rest of the Bay Area. Love it. Love it. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, let's go over to Jen. Jen, you know, what, what are you seeing right now in your particular market and some nuances that you're noticing right now? Jen, you there? Okay, we'll come back to Jen. Uh, let me go over to Rosa. Rosa Moreno. Hence why, hence why we have uh, cameras on, you guys. All right, so I'm going to go over to PK. Yes, sir. All right. So want to get a quick update. What is an area that you feel is your specialty market right now that you can speak very intelligently about if I was a consumer? Give me a market that you feel super, super confident about. I mean, I would have to say Oakland Hills for sure is my expertise. Um, what we are seeing in Oakland Hills is that compared to last year, same time during the pandemic, there is more new homes hitting the market on a weekly basis. Uh, the conditions of the homes have uh, decreased slightly. So just be prepared if you're looking to purchase in Oakland Hills. The homes that are hitting the markets are the older ones. Um, and the days on the market average has gone up from uh, seven days to now close to uh, 11 day mark, which means that we're getting closer to uh, longer days on the market compared to last year, more inventory in the market, but the conditions of the homes are a little bit less uh, favorable towards new home uh, buyers or first time home buyers. So just mentally prepare uh, to deal with a little bit older homes, but uh, definitely a better time to purchase in the Oakland Hills compared to last year. Awesome. What we're seeing in particular cities like Oakland, where the year over year inventory was minus 20% is now minus 11%, minus 10%. So, so we're seeing a difference, obviously more homes coming on the market. We're not completely stabilized in a normal market, but we're moving into more of a normal style market. Normal style market is houses don't stay on the, the, the market for 14 days or less, right? They're on the market for you know, 20 days plus, you know, and the, the years prior, 30 days on the market was, was normal in our market, but obviously pandemic changed everything. So that's some really good insight. Uh, let's go over to, uh, let's go over to Jay. Jay is in a different market. He is in the, um, in, in the South Bay. So Jay, give us a quick update on things that you're seeing in your market. I'm seeing the same thing as well. When pending on a, on a listing here, just under two weeks, and we're starting to see uh, listings sitting like PK mentioned in the Oakland Hills for longer, uh, probably over two weeks. I'm saying probably because I don't have all the data right in front of me. In terms of speaking with other agents and just being in communication out in the field, uh, hearing of less uh, activity at open houses, went to an open house last week, uh, fairly close to my uh, comp, just an extra bedroom, extra, uh, and pretty much no one had come and visited on that Sunday. Um, so again, it could just be a, a summer slump. Uh, traditionally, in this neighborhood, in this area, August is when we expect to see a slump. We're seeing it now in July. It could also be the factor that there wasn't really a summer last year. Uh, you have people uh, traveling. You have people on vacation. Uh, not necessarily spending this time in the market. That doesn't mean that come August, September, those buyers are going to come out in full force. And uh, we're going to see a drop in the uh, days on market. Um, there's another quote since we're doing quotes this morning. Uh, prediction is difficult, particularly about the future. So I'm not claiming I, that we know exactly what's going on. Just what we see what's happening in the moment. We're generally about a month after 
the data piled up, we can see a trend. That said, I recommend everyone to speak with their realtor, to ask questions, the realtor speak with their clients, show them the data, encourage both buyers and sellers, let them know that activity is happening. And whenever there's a shift, that this is a great time to realign, see what your goals are, and work with your professional to get things done. So, so Jay, how, how long have you been in real estate? I was licensed two years ago. I worked full time in healthcare uh, uh, for over a year after. But when, when you hear Jay talk, you guys, he obviously has the communication piece down. And now he's filling his mind with the data and the data points and, and the talk tracks. And, and you can feel it. You can hear it in his words, right? A, a generic answer is like, oh, yep, yeah, in, interest rates are down, right? Inventory is slightly picking up. And we're seeing a little bit of a stabilization. Okay, cool. Like, we can all say that. But that's surface level. Why I love having these conversations is I hear and get to hear and get to have you guys share like the like third level and deeper and deeper and how you guys communicate what's really going on in the market. So Jay, really, really good insight. Dewey, let's hear from you, my brother. You've been um, obviously on a tear since you started in this game. What, what are some things that you're noticing as of late in, in the local market that you serve? All right, both my top producers don't say anything as soon as I call on them. So <laughs> I'm gonna go over to Kyle. Kyle, I saw you watching this in the office the other day. Uh, so let me hear from you, my brother, with a quick update on the market. Sure, so I mean, give me any market, give me five minutes, I'll be the best in that marketplace. So we'll go with the uh, Central on, let, me give, let me give you a market. I want to talk about Walnut Creek. Oh, love it, all right. Sweet. So Walnut Creek a few months ago was one of the hottest markets we've ever even seen in the Bay Area. I mean, we were seeing on any property upwards of 10, 15, 20, sometimes in some cases, 30 offers on properties, and they were flying way over asking. In some cases, they were going upwards of $200,000 over asking non-contingent, which means they were waiving the right to even inspect the property. So that was really wild, and it was a pretty wild time. However, we have seen a shift coming or a, a shift that's happening right now in the marketplace where uh, we're seeing not near as many offers on properties. You know, we're in between one to five in some cases, um, you know, the, we're seeing that the listing agent is actually calling the buyer's agents to see if they're going to be writing offers to get any updates from them or anything like that, which is pretty crazy because prior to that, buyer's agents couldn't even get a hold of the listing agents because they had so many people coming in. Um, a lot of what's driving that is you know people wanted to get their summertime back the whole season's got flipped from COVID and so now it looks like a lot of people are taking a lot of that time to go out take their families out uh, explore areas go camping take vacation time and you know another big thing that's contributing to this slowdown is a lot of buyer fatigue you know people kept getting beat out of the market and kept getting pushed into places where they really just didn't want to live and in a lot of cases was too far away for where they wanted to commute um, that being said we still have a supply and demand issue and that will always come back around to get us. So I think, yeah, we are having a little bit of a slowdown right now uh, with the city opening back up, people going back to work. That makes sense. More people living in the cities. I don't think we're coming up on a market drop. I think we're in a healthy marketplace right now. Um, you know, based on the numbers, this is what a normal market should look like. So are we coming up on a drop? I don't think so. I think we're in a stable market right now. Um, my, my question to you is if you do choose to hold off for any longer right now, which right now could be a beautiful time to get in. Interest rates are still low. You're not going to be competing with 20 or 30 people. You might be competing with five. Um, however, you know, if the market were to take a little bit of a dip, I know myself, I have a laundry list of people that have been waiting for this moment. And I can promise you every other realtor in the market has these people as well. So if it does take a dip, you're going to be competing with by a long shot more people than you would right now. So now could be the best time for you. You guys, thank you for coming to Kyle Hively's TED Talk. Um, he will be <laughs> tuning in next week on Wednesday for the next session of his TED Talk. But Kyle, let me ask you a quick question. Are sales prices up year over year in Walnut Creek? Oh, yeah. Sales prices are up. It's skyrocketed. I mean, if you were to buy a house last year for a million bucks, you would have gained about $300,000 in equity in just one year of owning that property in this market. And the reason why that's going on is because you can't build any more houses here. 
Walnut, you can't, can't build more in Walnut Creek, Pleasant. There's no more new home builds. That's why people that are trying to get into a relatively new home are pushing out towards areas like Stockton, Sassoon City, Fairfield, so they can still get a somewhat decent deal and you know a decent amount of property to go with it. So I, I love what you said here. So let's just talk about Walnut Creek for, for a quick example. Why do people want to move to Walnut Creek? They want to be in the suburbs and they want to be in great school districts, which Walnut Creek offers. The sales prices year over year, Walnut Creek are up 15%, but check this out, city over Pleasant Hill, where people are thinking, well, if I can't move to Walnut Creek, I'll move to Pleasant Hill. Prices are up 40% year over year in Pleasant Hill, which is the next city over, right? And so being able to understand the nuances and where things are moving, a lot of this information is going to come from the weather report. Why am I a huge proponent of the weather report? Because the way the information is broke down, you're going to see all kinds of stuff. You're going to see NAR put out stuff, CAR. You're going to see all these graphs and all this stuff. And you're like, fuck, how do I digest this information first off as a realtor? And how do I convey that message to a consumer to where it's easy for them to understand? Because the last thing you want to do to a consumer is you want to data dump. And then they're like, uh, okay, let me think about all of this stuff, right? You don't want a data dump. You want to have clear and concise update to where it's like they just tuned into a quick news channel and be like, oh, okay, good. Yeah, I got it, right? And that's really what I want you guys to wrap your head around is being able to summarize what is happening in your local market. So this is good stuff, Kyle. Great update. Let's go over to Robert Jones. Robert Jones, newer in the game, um, but, but you know, obviously has experience dealing with clients, communication. Robert, what are some nuances that you are seeing? Yeah, thanks for calling on me. Um, you know, some of the things that we've spoken about in our discussions, um, the um, the market is dying down just a bit. There's a few less buyers on the market. Uh, I think it's mortgage sales that have dropped consecutively for like three weeks in a row. And we're also seeing more houses hit the inventory. And that's kind of a seasonal thing. So this is usually the time where we see the most inventory and we're seeing a few buyers back away from the market. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Who else wants to chime in? Aaliyah, let's hear from you. Aaliyah, you look cold up there in Nevada. Hi, baby. <laughs> all right. So it's Aaliyah, actually so warm, finally. Okay. All right. All right. So hit us with it. What are some things that you are seeing? Um, well, not to sound like a broken record, but pretty much what everybody else is saying, inventory is rising in Oakland, um, where I am, I think, Oh gosh, this is bad because I don't have exact numbers. So you guys are making me like, okay, I need no, no, to listen, know my numbers. Aaliyah, that's why we do coaching, right? Because yeah, I tell you, yeah, if we go back about. six months and ask <laughs> Kyle the same question, as much energy as Kyle has, he wasn't as concise as he is now. And, I, yeah. I, and this is all, all hats off to you, Kyle. It's just growth and growth and growth. So if you don't have numbers now, I promise you, because we're going to go. I'll have numbers next week. Next we're going to go Wednesday. over the weather report right now. We're going to kind of break it down, and then you guys can watch it on your own. But let me just ask you a quick question, then, Aaliyah. Um, me and my 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 fiance Jen, we yeah, want to yeah, wait yeah. until next year. We want to wait until next year because we feel there's going to be an inventory, or excuse me, a a uh, a housing drop, or we're going to wait for the crash. Let's say that. How do you respond to that? That's an interesting comment. As I can't um, predict the future, what I do know now is inventory is rising. There's been, over the past year, there has been a ton of competition in this market, but buyers are starting to get tired of that. And a lot of buyers are thinking just like you, I think I'm gonna wait a year. And what that's doing is- Aaliyah, Aaliyah the, hold on, like, Aaliyah, somebody is slurping their drink. I don't know if it's- yellow. <laughs> Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I thought it was someone else. If it's your baby, then go on. <laughs> sorry, baby. Okay, can you pause that for a second? Sorry. sorry. Go um, on, yeah. uh, other buyers are thinking exactly just like you, like they're going to wait. Um, and what's that's, what that's doing is it's making the market less competitive. So right now is a great time inventory is rising, buyers are taking a break. If you're looking to buy, I'd say, let's go look for houses now. Your, your buying power is strong now, being that interest rates are low. I know you've heard that a million times, but yeah, I'd say let's, right now is the time. Okay, good, good. And like Kyle said, I mean, people, 
if I only saw a 15% increase of my home value year over year on a house that I bought for a million dollars, 15% is a pretty darn good gain in one year, right? Is it more in certain markets? Is it 20, is it 30 in certain markets? Absolutely. But if I got a 15% return on my investment year over year, I think I'm winning for my first year. I think I'm winning, right? And, 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 and that's saying that people spent or purchase houses for over asking price and prices are still up year over year. So that's a huge gain for people. So let's do this. Let's hear from one other person. Dewey, I called on you earlier, bro. Are you available? All right, Jen, I called on you earlier. Are you available? All right, cool. We will continue on. Uh, let's go over to uh, Chris. Chris is up in the San, uh, Sacramento market. Let's hear from you, Chris. Yeah, all right. Um, similar to uh, kind of what everybody else is seeing, we're, we're seeing more inventory. Um, our median home price this week just dropped to uh, $499 from $510 last week. Um, so we're, we're starting to see kind of an inflection point in the data. Um, you know, only time will tell whether this is a, you know, a seasonal shift or whether it will continue through, uh, through the winter and, and next spring. But, uh, this is normally the time that this shift, this type of shift happens in this market anyway, right around July or August. Um, so yeah, higher days on market. Um, I think average days on market, uh, right now is about, uh, me, I'm sorry, median days on market about 14, um, which is up from last week, which was like 10. Um, and so definitely seeing a kind of a, a, a crest in the data and an inflection point. And, uh, you know, as, as a buyer, what that means for, for you as a buyer is that, you know, this is very, very preliminary data. This is just coming out. So if we can get ahead of the market and, um, you know, start shopping again, find something that meets your criteria, we may be able to get ahead of the, the demand that, that could be coming for, from people that have been waiting for this type of thing to happen. Good stuff. I love it. I love it. Let me ask a quick question. If you are newer in this game, obviously we have agents that have been in here for 10 years or more, five years, you know, a couple months, so on and so forth. So there's a good blend here. How many of you right now have a true understanding of the buyer flow from the moment you get a lead until the moment you guys write a contract. How many of you have a clear, concise flow for every single time you get a lead that you convert all the way up into writing contract? Please give me a reaction down below. Give me a hand raise if you have an, a flow. Know what to do. Okay, so that was, uh, uh, Kelly, that was, I think you're, I've obviously worked with you. And so I think you have a pretty good understanding of the flow. So, so obviously there's some nuances here that you guys need to understand. First off, once I convert for an appointment, what do I do? I set up the buyer CMA tour. I send out a group text. I start that flow. We'll talk about this on another one. But now that I'm out seeing homes, do I know if I'm out showing homes right now, you guys, you guys need to understand what comes next. What comes after I show homes and somebody likes the home and they wanna move forward? Amy, what is the very next step that we should be doing with our clients? As soon as they say, I like that home. I think we wanna submit an offer. What is the next step? Have we already had the buyer's presentation already? So yeah, okay. So, so obviously yeah, buyer's presentation. So we did buyer's presentation. We went out and saw homes. Fuck, we love this. We wanna write an offer, what next? Well, I personally would call my mentor, Donna Chen. <laughs> okay. And be like, what do I do? <laughs> but we would try to create an offer. But how? To... So, so, so there's Strategize. some components here we're, we're missing. So we would next hop on a Zoom call to do, re review what two things? Disclosures. And comparable. Disclosures and your what? Your data. The yeah. data is your comparable sales, right? So uh, just sent E my flow on Asana, awesome. I have something built on Canva as well. You guys should know, okay, I'm great at communication. I converted for the appointment. I set the appointment. I did a buyer's consult. We went out and saw more homes. Now they wanna write an offer. Now I'm gonna review disclosures and I'm gonna review comps. If you guys don't understand the data, how can you talk about strategy? And if you don't understand your um, disclosures, how can you discuss terms? And then what's going to happen is we want to write an offer at a million fifty. 
Have you spent the time reviewing the residential purchase agreement? How do I do that? There is tons of videos on Slack. You guys can watch the video. Is some of the shit boring? Absolutely, right? But it is necessary in order for you to be able to communicate that effectively to a client versus saying, oh my God, they want to write an offer and now I'm in panic mode, right? So when you're in panic mode, what, per, what comes out of that? Stress, right? I want you working from a sense of urgency versus panic. So the, the, the message here, you guys, is to understand the buying flow. And if you don't, I'll spend that time with you. We can hop on another call. But if there's parts of the, because some of you, great on the communication piece, right? I think you guys can sell ice to an Eskimo, right? But then when someone says, oh, I want to move forward, that's when we get a lot of the, oh, shit calls. What the fuck do I do now, right? But you guys have to take it upon yourself. And like, I'm going to review disclosures. I don't know what an SPQ is. I don't know what a section one is. I don't know what any of this stuff is. So ask for the help. Use your resources in Slack. And then figure out how to write an RPA. If you've never wrote an RPA, I want you guys to put an RPA together, send it to your mentor, fill it out to your best ability, and have them help you and coach you through the things that need to be filled in correctly. Once you guys do it a few times, it's pretty darn easy. But the first couple of times, it's tough. And you're like, well, how do I put all this in, in my DocuSign and, and, and where are all my car forms? It's a little daunting at first, but the, 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 the message here is to make sure that you understand all the process points, right? What am I good at and where are my challenges at? That way you don't get down to the final wire and there's offers are due tomorrow at noon and it's, it's eight o'clock at night. You're like, oh my God, what am I gonna do, right? At least you have been through some of these things and you have enough information to be dangerous. You can put together the RPA, you can send it out to us for approval and for polishing points, but there's gonna be some things that you guys need to do on your own in order to grow in this business. So let's get back to the weather report. I'm gonna pull something up right now and I'm gonna share some of this data points because I'm getting a lot of people asking, well, where do I get some of this information? So I'm gonna pull this up really quick. We're gonna kind of dissect through some of this and let's do this right now. And feel free to take notes, but you guys will have this as well. Um, I just wanna go over a couple key points. No signs of slowing down. I'm David Stark and welcome to a special edition and I'll of the keep East pausing. Bay Real Estate Weather Report. Why is real estate still moving quickly, incredibly strong demand for home ownership, and a few more homes for sale? During June, there were a bit more than 100 homes for sale throughout the East Bay compared with the previous month. This was the largest month-to-month -month increase since the beginning of the year and driven by more homes in the market in some parts of Contra. So, so what he said right there, it's the largest month-to-month -month increase um, in, in over a year. So what that means is that's why we're seeing a little less on the offer side, a little less competition on, on these homes when you guys are out right now. Off the county. Competition between these buyers is definitely pushing prices to record levels. However, the rate of increase in median sales price for a single family detached home in East Bay has slowed during the last three months. What hasn't slowed? Home sales. April, May, and June, more homes sold compared with the same period. So, so right there, he just said that, um, that, that sales had decreased or stabilized just a little bit um, in the last couple months. And homes sold faster too. A home was on the market in the East Bay on average for about half as long compared with the first six months of 2020. That's the big picture. Let's get specific, starting with the 880 corridor. Homes for sale. Compared to last June, not many choices for home buyers. Berkeley, 48 homes for sale down more than 20%. Fremont, 73 for sale down 44%. Hayward down 35%. Oakland down 11. And so let's take Oakland for an example here. Um, I can recall, I think about three or four months ago, that 11% number was in the 20%. And so obviously that's, that's going to change a little bit, right? You're going to see versus 20 offers, you're going to see nine to 10 offers on, on properties in Oakland. Prices, Albany was the exception, dropping 1%. Massive increases everywhere else. Castro Valley, 1.28, up 40% from last June. I mean, so think about this. The, the benefits of, of uh, or the benefits of moving now versus waiting. Well, look at Mr. Johnson, last year when you guys were in the market but decided to take a break, if you would have purchased a home in Union City at 925,000, those houses are up 53% in just Union City alone. 
So do you see the, the maybe the disadvantages of waiting, right? Because there's no signs of the market going down in price. Are we going to see more of a normalization? Totally. But we're not seeing a drop in prices. Fremont, Hayward, Newark, all up more than 20%. Union City, 1.412, up more than 50%. Crazy. Sales, very strong. Alameda, 55 homes sold, up 150%. Berkeley, 73, up more than 120%. Newark, 38, up 100%. Moving into West Contra Costa County, we start to see where the supply of homes for sale is increasing. Homes for sale. Take El Sobrani out of the mix and more choices for buyers everywhere. El Cerrito, 18, up 50%. San Pablo, 15, up 36%. And so when you look at the numbers at a whole, when you have markets like, uh, what is this? El Sobrante, uh, Hercules, Pinole, Richmond, San Pablo, when they take in those numbers, that's going to affect the overall big number. So this is actually good, but it doesn't necessarily say that, oh yeah, every single area, every single market has more inventory. These will skew some of the numbers as a whole. Prices, more supply, but even more demand. Prices up everywhere. El Cerrito tops 1.3 million at 37%. El Sobrani at 760 at 43%. Richmond up more than 20%. Sales up almost everywhere. El Sobrani, 19 sold. Hercules, 25, up more than 100. So let, let's look at this. So this is really, really cool. Um, so in Hercules, house, uh, home sold up 127%. So we have a new office. This is going in, in downtown Hercules, right on the waterfront there. Um, there's 1,500 lease condos and apartments uh, within walking distance right there where we are. So to be one of the main uh, real estate players right there on the main strip and to be able to, to, to possibly capture all those renters that live there, this is going to be a huge, huge opportunity for About us. 20%. Richmond, 72, up more than 40%. Now we'll go to central Contra Costa County. Homes for sale. Mixed. Increases in Clayton and Pleasant Hill. Fewer choices in Concord and Martinez. Walnut Creek, 30 for sale, down 40%. Prices up everywhere. Clayton and Concord, both up more than 30%. Pleasant Hill, 1.17 up 40% from last year. Sales, healthy. Concord, 120 sold, up 38%. Martinez, 59 up almost 60%. Let's check out La Mirinda next. Homes for sale, mixed. Moraga up, but Arenda, 12 for sale, down 75%. Prices up, but not dramatically. Lafayette and so, so there you go, Kelly. There's 12% new homes available. Um, you know, that's a huge door knocking opportunity. Huge door knocking opportunity because there's there's so little of options in Orinda. Um, and so there's a there's a, there's an opportunity there for you to find sellers. Saga, both in the 1.7, 1.8 range, up 11 percent Orinda, 2.2, up 16 percent Sales also mixed. Lafayette and Arenda both up more than 50% with Moraga 13 sold down 35%. High demand is driving the Tri-Valley real estate markets. Homes for sale down everywhere compared with last June. Danville 37 for sale, Dublin 9 for sale, Livermore 40 plus than 31 and San Ramon just 17 down more than 60%. Prices Alamo and Danville both in the 2 million range. Dublin 1.463 up more than 40%. Livermore and Pleasant both up 31% and San Ramon 1.63 up more than 35%. Sales, here's where that high demand really shows up. Mm -hmm. Even with record breaking prices, sales up everywhere. Alamo 43, Dublin 64, Livermore 134, Pleasant 88, San Ramon 95. Nuts. We'll wrap up the weather report in the Delta. Homes for sale, mixed. Antioch, Grandwood and Discovery Bay all down. Oakley and Pittsburgh both almost unchanged. Prices still increasing. Brentwood and Discovery Bay both solidly in the $800,000 range. Pittsburgh, 608, up 28%. Sales, mostly strong. Sales in Brentwood and Pittsburgh, both up more than 40%. Oakley down slightly from last year. So we're going to pause it there, you guys. So the reason I want you guys to, obviously, this is in Slack. Um, Mirnaz asked, well, where's market updates? You can go in Slack and find any of the new market update. Uh, information. Also, you can watch this weather report. What I want you to do is I want you to create your own market pitch based off of the weather report. We talk about this every single time this weather report comes out. Yeah, and 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 some of the things that that um, David Stark said, I heard some of you guys say this, like Miles saying the reason why people are moving out there. Well, look what's happened in Pittsburgh and Oakley and Antioch. Like 
We sold a house last year with the pool in Oakley for $470,000. Try to find a pool in a good part of Oakley or a home in a good part of Oakley right now for $470,000. Good luck, right? Their house is probably worth, if we looked right now, probably I'd say 550, 560, maybe even a little bit more than that, right? So case in point is that I want you guys to take the weather report and I want you to paraphrase it. I want you to pick out key areas that you serve that most of your buyers are. Maybe you went to school there, maybe you live there. Become an area expert on the data. Now, we're not saying data dump on everybody, but know your shit. This is the largest investment in their life. And if you can speak about the numbers, understand the data, have positive intellectual dialogue with your consumers, what's that gonna do? It's gonna build trust. It's gonna build awareness. They're going to look at you as a leader and a teacher. And I've said that since day one. So PK, you had your hand up. Yes. Uh, how often do we get the weather report? Is it a weekly thing or a month? It's a monthly thing. Okay, a monthly thing. Sorry, I got a phone call on my phone. And um, so it's it's fair to say that we should be scheduling it. And what, da what day does it release? Is it on the same day of the month? You know, I don't know exactly which day, but if you go into the bay, uh, bayeast.org website, uh -huh. free for everyone, even if you're not a member, and you go into housing statistics, you can look at all the historical videos. Okay. Um, so I don't know exactly what day it comes out, but it's always a month behind. So the one that's coming out for July, it says July weather report. It's actually- I think it's usually July. the second week. One more time, you're breaking up really bad. I think it's usually the second week of the month. Um, and it, I think you just subscribe to them on, on YouTube. And then whenever they release that video, you can just share it. Yeah, that's, what, that's exactly what I do is I subscribe to them on YouTube and I turn the bell notification on because they rarely post. And when they do, it's usually only just the weather report. So I get it immediately. Totally. And, 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 and you know, what Kenny just said is why we're saying this, you guys, is you guys should recreate the video long form for Facebook, IG, and YouTube or short reels. Hey, guys, really quick. Welcome to Kelly O'Gorman Show. I want to give you a quick update on what's happening in the La Marinda market. Boom, boom, boom. If you guys want more information, hit me up. Love to talk to you about the market specifically. Cool. Hey guys, welcome to the Kyle Show. Want to share with you what's happening in Walnut Creek and Pleasant Hill. You guys are going to be fucking astonished by these numbers. This is just in breaking news. Got a quick update for you. We have a, a room in Brentwood now with all the lights and you got the green screen. You can go in there, create your own weather report your way. Uh, Kenny, did you want to chime in on this, brother? Yeah, I mean, we mentioned that a couple of times. <clears throat> you guys, you guys can recreate the video pretty easily. It literally just copy the stats and put up, it doesn't even have to be fancy, right? You can just sit here on Zoom and just type out all the numbers, put it on a spreadsheet, make it just really large and, and speak on it. Make it your virtual background. There's a um, app called, oh yeah, mm -hmm, I'll drop that. But there's a, there's a, a Loom, Loom's a great app or uh, this thing, mm -hmm, I'll, I'll drop into the chat, but you can kind of just literally just point at the thing and speak about it. And then for you guys, you're not doing the entire East Bay, you're probably doing just try Valley, just West Contra Costa, or or make separate ones, you know. But you don't need to. Shorter is better for, um, you know, digest. And you guys can have some fun with it. It's like Aaliyah. You can have like your daughter be like the newscaster, be like, okay, here in live and direct from Aaliyah Fali. Uh, let's hear about the weather report in the market for whatever. Like you guys can have some fun with it and create it your way. None of the information that they put out is proprietary information. This is public information that you can use repurpose, retool, and direct it any way that you guys want, right? It should be on your guys' store, on your wall every single month, right? I got, you know, I, I my June, July, August, September, every single month, here's a quick update on what's happening in the local real estate market. You guys have so much intel because you're out on the streets and you're dealing with the consumers and you're hearing all this information and you're learning, start sharing those things with, with the public and start documenting that, like Kenny said, in long form on all social media. Um, so you guys, let's come to the uh, to a head on this. I want to go around the room, get some key takeaways from some people that are here today. Um, let's go over to Daniel Johnson. Daniel, what were some key takeaways from today? Um, definitely got me going on the weather report. I'm over here taking notes and uh, posting some stuff on Instagram. Um, but yeah, got to get the weather report down to where it's natural and it feels like um, it's just something that you know and you can speak with conviction. Um, that's definitely the biggest thing for me. For sure. Awesome. Uh, Jen, you had your hand up. I'm going to go over to Jen. Sorry it's that okay. I wasn't around when you called. <laughs> All right. um, so when I was listening, key takeaways, um, 
one, um, know your stats, know your market, but it's also important to know the processes of real estate. We're not just people opening doors. You need to know how to write an RPA. You need to know how to make sure not to get sued. Um, and also market wise, um, that the market is normalizing right now where we're so used to in the last year or six, six to 12 months, we're, you know, used to homes flying on a market in seven days. That's not normal. Um, we're starting to see days on market, um, stabilizing and normalizing where it's, you know, sitting on a market for 15 to 20, maybe 30 days. And that's normal. So those are the takeaways. For sure. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, let's go over to Shayla. Shayla, what were some of your takeaways from today's session? Hey, Brandon, can you turn your, your camera off, bro? Cause it's, it's, it's making me a little dizzy with you moving around. Thank you, brother. Uh, Shayla, you want to chime in? Yes, I think that um, looking at the weather report is definitely good advice and knowing your markets and knowing neighborhoods, also knowing numbers and contracts is also good advice for new and more seasoned agents. For sure, absolutely. Good stuff, Shayla. Let's go over to uh, Mirnaz. Mirnaz, uh, takeaways from today's sesh. All right, we're going to move over to Brittany Wade. Brittany Wade, takeaways from today's sesh. Uh, keeping up with the market, I think that's really important. So I enjoyed that video you showed. I'm definitely going to keep following that. Also, going over the buying flow. I have been showing some houses, but I do need to like practice the buyer presentation and learning the disclosures and the CMA and strategizing offers even before I get to that point. I definitely want to practice that more. So I really enjoyed pretty much hearing everything you had to say today. Awesome. Awesome. And thanks for being here. And it's like, it's anticipation, right? It's like, all right, cool. I know I'm good on the communication piece, but do I understand these disclosures and these comps and how to put the RPA? Or am I working from a sense of, oh my God, I am super panicked. What do I do now? It's, I should be able to read, digest all this information, do as much as I possibly can, and then be like, okay, I've done everything that I know how to do based on the videos. I think I marked all the boxes. I did the down payment. I know where the, you know, boxes for the, you know, proof of funds for the, you know, uh, uh, pre-approval. And now I just need a little bit of help revising it and making sure everything is correct. So let's hear from two other people, quick takeaways. Let's go over to, uh, let's go over to Tania. Tania, uh, quick takeaways from today's sesh. I think it was absolutely fantastic. The idea of being in a positive state of mind when doing this and being up on the market so that we're informed when we're talking to our buyers and sellers that we look like we know what we're doing. All of that was good stuff to me. Good, good. I love it. I love it. I'm Nicole Penland. Let's go over to you. Takeaways from today's sesh. Um, I've got some direction of where to find some stuff as I, I want to get more um, familiar with the, the RPAs and learning the disclosures and all of that. So I am actually looking at um, some of that in Slack right now as i'm perfect listening. and you and i have a, a session right now at 9 30 so just hang on yeah. and and mm -hmm. Brittany, if you have a second if you want to hang on too you can hop into this coaching session because i think it'll answer a lot of the questions you have i see a, a hand up it's sure. iphone i want to do that contract class at 9 30 with deborah penny i thought that would be helpful you should yeah absolutely 100 do that class i think it'd be super super helpful and then we'll connect at another time i see iphone hand raised i don't know who that is i apologize but go ahead Hey, Elias. My name is Kwanzo. Um, I uh, just spoke with Kenny yesterday. I'm joining the team and, uh, you know, and he sent me the link. I, I've been just, you know, I've, I've been a, a fly on the wall, just listening in on the whole conversation. Really enjoyed it. Really got a lot of key you know, takeaways. I mean, one, the mindset, absolutely key. Um, and then also, you know, uh, I think the one thing that uh, in terms of the market is like letting the uh, the, the buyers know like like we're normalizing it doesn't mean the price is going to drop it just means that we're actually now going to a normal market so you know i think that's an important distinction between oh you know we're going to see a correction so i think a lot of people are are thinking that's the next step but the reality is no we have to go into an actual normalized market where inventory gets into 
Oh, we lost your audio, bro. That's market. There you so are. very key to remind people. So thank you for that. And I really look forward to, to learning and growing with the rest of the team. This is fantastic. Can't wait. Awesome, brother. Well, hey, man, welcome to the team. Welcome to the future of real estate. Really, really stoked to have you here. Um, Gabrielle, let's uh, let's go over to you and then we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to, to jump on that point. I feel like when a lot of buyers think like, oh, I just want to wait for the market to crash or slow down, what they expect to happen is the house prices dropping. And I think that's the key thing they're waiting for when they say I'm going to wait because they want to get what in their mind is a better deal. So I think it was really invaluable today to see that we report and be like, well, no, you know, we are normalizing, but what we're seeing is not a drop in prices. Here's what we're seeing instead that's causing that normalization. So that's, um, that's a key point I took away today is definitely being able to combat that. No, I want to wait with, well, here's what you might expect when you wait. Not totally. wait. Yeah. yeah. Advantages and disadvantages of waiting. And like, if you're going to do a buyer's consult, who says you can't screenshot some of these things? I'm like, okay, actually, we've been looking at Walnut Creek. So I pulled up some stats. I want to share this with you. And like how powerful that is, because now it's also a third party. Endorsement. It's not just coming. <laughs> It's not just coming from you as, as an opinion. So Gabrielle, really, really good point. Um, so let's go full circle. Let's wrap this up. I know um, I know you're driving Martinique, but let's go over to Miss Terry. Miss Terry, always a wealth of her information. Uh, takeaways from today's session and let's have you take us off the field today. Um, very good session because this is what we do folks. Um, we basically assist buyers in purchasing home and sellers. And so that data is, that's your ticket. It's your ticket to educate um, clients on what's actually going on in the market. No one, I, I would suggest if you have not learned that RPA, why waste your time showing a property? Because the odds on someone wanting to write an offer is 80-20. They're gonna love the home. So you gotta learn that RPA first. Learning the RPA is the easy part. The disclosures is where you show your expertise. Basically, if you can break that house down from the disclosures, even though there might be some issues, the education part on letting that client know how they can get around some of those issues on those disclosures are major. So um, the takeaway today is first and foremost, you gotta learn the RPA. Deborah Penny does an awesome job going over it. You can make copies of the RPA, carry it around with you. When you're doing lunch, just read it, read it, read it, read it. I encourage that. And disclosures, keep looking at them. It's major for your career. Once you learn how to write an RPA and you learn how to break down a, dis a disclosure packet where a client can understand, it's, it's home free from there. You, you have to know that, those two main ingredients. You can be as cute as you want on TikTok. You can be <laughs> as pretty as you want on Facebook. But those are just, that's not, the, that's not, the, that's not it. Anyway, Amen. Amen. my encouragement <laughs> to you today is to learn how to do this. <laughs> and to learn how to do this isn't always the social media aspect of it. It's the major components that basically gives you the opportunity to educate the client and yeah. help them get into a home that's going to be a future um, asset for their family. So awesome. again, you guys can do this. It's only 13 pages. <laughs> right. Takes well, longer to make a video. <laughs> oh yeah! Shout it. out! Shout out to Kenny for the um, video um, office in Brentwood. Yes, that's so dope. Um, so Kenny, I know you took yourself off of mute. Did you want to chime in? Yeah, real, real quick, real short. Like I used to um, <clears throat> have a mass, uh, like a primary disclosures folder where I just put all the disclosures in there. This was the time way before disclosures IO. But I, I, and then when I was working with new agents, I had them go and study disclosures. And then I even had some buyers because then like, we know that, well, not we, like you can easily get a 15, 20, $30,000 a section one on a deck and the deck's fine. You can get like a 20 grand repair underneath the front steps. If it's concrete porch, it was done well. And it's pretty normal. But then if your client's only seeing that disclosure package for the first time, it will freak them out. Like we had a listing in Montclair, 75 grand under the driveway, the driveway's fine. But cause then um, anyways, you guys need to read a lot of disclosures, download a lot of disclosures, and maybe keep a folder. And then you can, uh, and then you actually share it. If you're a mentor, maybe share it with your mentees. That way, they're not only reading one file at a time. They can go in and compare different. Oh, uh, they could get here's five, ten different inspection reports. This is pretty normal and then stuff like that. And then I used to even for my very technical 
go buyers. I, I even send them, hey, some things on this might freak you out, but check out this other disclosure folder, which has other properties. You can make your own comparison. So using data and letting good clients have the data will make your life easier. Because then when you're, when you're speaking to them, they might think, well, you're trying to screw me over. Your opinion sucks. It's 50 grand. Why are you asking me to buy, right, buy this property when it's, you know, it could be something pretty actually minor. Totally. And so, uh, and we will obviously talk more about this because obviously there's a need, but we do a summary on every single property that we're going to write. And we share that summary with the client. Once you do that once or twice with the client and you show them how to read disclosures, you don't have to spend hour upon hour upon hour reading every disclosure because you've educated the consumer. You've said, these are the things that I noticed. Please take a look at them and, and let me know if you have any questions. But you understand them first off, will help you to educate your consumer. So um, really good session today, you guys, really great job. And Nicole Penland, hang on the line. You and I have a session together, but you guys get out there and own your day. Appreciate you, grateful for you guys continuously showing up and uh, have an amazing, amazing day. Thank you for all your contributions today. I am actually going to try to switch over to my computer. I was. Yeah, feel free. I'll, I'll, I'll hang tight. I was logged in from my phone. I had to drop off my kids. <laughs> Let me get some people out of the room. I'll enter you. There we go. There you are. How you doing? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. How are you? I'm good. How about yourself? I'm good. I'm good. All right. So let's go over all of your questions. First off, I want to make this time, um, you know, super laser focused about you. So um, what are some questions that you have that you want to address? Okay. So um, I'm trying to get down the flow of everything and try to build uh, processes. So um, I set the appointment and I'm giving the buyer's presentation during the appointment. To, they're seeing if they're wanting to move forward with. Um, so the buyer's presentation, like generally, like um, there's like different phases of the presentation, I believe, where like you start off with the um, building rapport, small talk, trying to get in, get comfortable with them, and then um, go into um, you usually use your the slides for the buyer's presentation when you, when you do it. Yeah. So, like so have, have you reviewed the buyer's consultation that Molly sent you? I did, and I actually created a script um, for me to continuously study, but to use as I go through the slides, like um, just a little key points, like um, instead of like the first slide, for example, it's pretty lengthy with giving the. Um, well, here, why don't, you bring, why don't you bring it up so we can just kind of walk and talk through this. Okay. Oh, shoot. Let me stop this recording. Sorry. 